Welcome to the show. It's Steve with a twist. We're laughing through the scriptures where humor coexists. It's time for another episode of the Cultural Hall. Uh, it is me and uh, my old friend Russ. It's Russ, Russ Wild. Hi, Russ from Texas. Hi, Richie. Uh, you know, the thing that I think about when I think about you, I always think about Texas, and I always think about uh, that I like to tell people, oh, I've got a buddy uh, just out down, uh, just outside of Texas, outside of Austin. And I always tell people, yeah, it's a town. And they go, yeah, we know where it is. Uh, you got to uh, witness the groundbreaking. Were you there on the front row? Were you able no, to I, a I shovel was, full? I was, I was in my living room watching this live stream. Of the Austin, and Texas it, Temple groundbreaking. They streamed it and you were able to get a code, a, a Zoom link, the URL. You didn't have to prove that you were homebound. <sighs> To be no, I think it, it. I think it was. I think it's just that it was like it was something really generic, like temple dedication dot lds dot org, and then it was just it. But yeah, it was. I watched the streaming. I was a little. I'm a video guy. Mm-hmm. I'm a television news person from the past. Uh, I was really disappointed at the video quality. I guess it's like, come on, I was down. I was down. <laughs> but other than that, I uh, I was actually glad that i wasn't there in person because it is a uh, warm here and the people in the video did not look cool at all now are we talking 4k you could see the sweat you know driplets well no that was because it was the picture was so blown out because they couldn't iris down uh-huh. uh i couldn't see anything they looked all like ghosts or they looked they looked like they were thinking celestial is what yeah. they were yeah and so but it was I mean, it looked like they were on the surface of the sun because it felt like that to the people there, I'm sure. And I, I was definitely. like, I, I I wear a suit sometimes to church and sometimes I don't. Mm-hmm. But that was a meeting that I saw the audience and a lot of people were wearing suits. And I was like, that is not a meeting I would have worn a suit to because it wasn't cool. Well, no. uh, uh, I mean, we've unpacked a lot of things here. First of all, why, <laughs> why, why wouldn't they have a better quality When you consider the amount of of saints in Texas, and I know that there were three groundbreakings. We'll get to this in a temple ticker that's coming out soon. Three groundbreakings in the same day, but it's not like we don't have staff from church headquarters and or the ability to hire, uh, you know, hired hands for the day and be able to have something like this be done in a professional manner. Do we are we just thinking not celestial, but like 1950s? I don't know. I, I don't know who did it. That's the thing. Like, I don't know if the church sent somebody, the local group hired some somebody that could do it. Some member did it. And I, I don't know. I just I just kept be, I, I was directing the production in my house. It's like Iris down, Iris down, please. <laughs> Iris down. I mean, it's tricky, too. Like, I mean, I, I I as a TV news person, like I've been to a million like groundbreakings or ribbon cutting or whatever whatever event where somebody has a press event and it's in the daytime and the lighting is terrible or they'll put up a tent and so there's weird shadow and then like super bright and like it's not it wasn't the best scenario for lighting but it didn't look good it could have been better so let me ask you this though about the groundbreaking oh yes go on Uh, uh significant spiritual promises made anything like that anything that stuck out to you about that um i don't want to sound um the the i don't remember the name of the general authority that spoke but his uh middle initial was a and that middle initial stood for austin is that real? Uh, because his dad's name was austin and his grandpa's name was austin and uh, and he told this story about when his grandfather was a missionary. He served in the Southern States Mission and was featured in the Ensign or Leahona of the time giving a, a speech on his mission in Dallas mm-hmm. or somewhere in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And he said, he's like, I can't prove this. I can't document this. But I like to think that 
while he was in Texas, he came through this area and he'd been, he perhaps, you know, came through this, this very spot. And that part struck me as a little weird. And I'm like, yeah, that's a nice sentiment, but like, that's weird. Yeah. Like, like maybe, but also there, that was probably just a big field and there wasn't a road anywhere there. And like, well, and to what point? It's not like, uh, you know, it's not like his. No, he's like Marona, a, picking yeah. temple spots. Yeah. No, it's not yeah. like that. It's not. He's not. Yeah. Really it, he's not, you know, Orson Whitney. Yeah. And the name Austin didn't have anything to do with Stephen F. And so I don't know. It, that part was weird to me. I have a really weird. So my ward is uh, equal distance between San Antonio and Austin. We're in the middle. And where the Austin Temple is, isn't it going to be any more convenient. In fact, it's probably going to be less convenient than the San Antonio Temple, but we are apparently going to be in the San Antonio Temple District. In the Austin so, Temple District. Oh, the Austin one, sorry, yeah. It, so yeah. It, it's a little bit more, like I feel like when they announced it, there, was a li- there wasn't the level of excitement that I thought there would be. Hmm. Like I was kind of like, oh, yes, cool. Austin's in the temple. I wonder where it's going to be. That was kind of where everybody thought it was going to be, but I just didn't feel like in my congregation there was a ton of excitement about it because, especially now where we know where it is, it's like not really close. It's not like we're getting a temple closer and it's going to be easier to go. It's like Mm -hmm. it's going to be at best the same level of difficulty to get to the temple, if not a little more, if you Mm -hmm. go to that one. And so I just didn't feel like there was a lot of excitement. In fact, like in our ward, our ward, uh, facebook group somebody was when they first put the rendering of the temple somebody was like gosh it looks a little plain to which i responded so you you're saying they match the architectural makeup of that community yeah because it's you know it's the size of suburb of austin not technically austin anyways but so i don't know it's just i think it, i think it'll be cool i'm excited to see it done i'm excited that it's uh, happening without uh any ill will but like it's just it looks like a smooth sailing getting it built. So we'll see well, in three now. years. Yeah, for now, for sure, a couple of years out. Uh, it, yeah, the the temples and and the uh, certainly the adversity. I know a lot of people just leaning in and saying, "Well, see, it's the last days," because the aver- adversity that you know coming after the temple that that just shows it. And maybe there's some of that, but also too, it is it is a. Uh, bizarre um sort of exchange that i feel like we've had in some communities where it's like no for god to accept our steeple it has to be 213 yeah. feet and i just feel like like we miss we we sort of miss the point like 192 is great or like n- you know not tall i will say my great. favorite part of the of the sarah service uh i uh, 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 she had graduated high school she uh, I don't know, 18, 19, somewhere in there. She said she was preparing to go on a mission. So she's, but graduated from high school last year, I assume. And she talked about having been on the her school's dance team. Mm-hmm. And like, I, I don't know, I'm just going to say their name was the Cedar Park Stars, like their dance team. Mm-hmm. And like they, she said that every night, every Friday night during the football games, the announcer would get on and say, nothing shines as bright as the cedar bark stars like that Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the football stadium is like essentially across the street from where the temple is going to be and so she said like you know in in a few years when this temple's built on friday nights when there's you know ten thousand people there for watching football Mm -hmm. like the temple will be shining brighter than anything and i thought that was cool and i think and that's something about that site that i have thought was uh interesting is that like it's right in the middle of where a bunch of people are going to be so it's not it's not it's it's tucked out of the way as in as as far as it's not in downtown austin obviously mm-hmm. but like it's not in a place where like like the san antonio temple is out away and if you didn't purposefully go to it you'd never see it but mm-hmm. the austin temple's in a place where at least people in that immediate area are going to see it a lot because there's a high school football stadium right there so uh well okay no i mean this isn't a temple ticker episode but no. certainly something that you've been uh that you had the opportunity to experience so that's uh, I, mean, I mean in the scheme of things uh-huh. like and i don't know what's more exciting they're also building a giant bucky's in my town okay essentially next to the stake center 
Um, so that like in Cedar Park, they're getting a temple next to their steak center and uh -huh. we're getting a Bucky's next to our steak center. And I don't know who won, uh -huh. but um, in, in state presidency meeting this week, the one of the members of the state presidency said, once that's open, every every trip's going to begin with a, a stop at Bucky's. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, who will you worship, Russ? Choose you this day. Have you met my friend Bucky? <laughs> I haven't. I've never been to a Bucky's. Certainly now it feels very trendy where even just a couple of years ago, it felt like it was like, oh, have you heard of this place? You got to yeah. check this place out. And now it's like everyone goes. It's the pilgrimage you have to do once in your life. It's it's uh, it's far more that than what it used to be. I, I, I mean, I feel like in five years, mm -hmm. uh, Bucky's will be what Krispy Kreme Donuts has become, mm, Okay, where it used to be this thing like, oh, my gosh, have you been? Have you seen uh -huh. one? Uh -huh. Did you drive 50 miles out of your way to get a donut? Mm -hmm. And then they open one relatively near to you and you go more than once and you're like, all right, cool. Yeah. And then everyone will need insulin from going to the Bucky's. Is that how far that comparison goes? Um, probably they'll need a second mortgage because it's not cheap. I, I wasn't aware. <laughs> I've never, I've never been. It's a cute little character, right? The Bucky's. Yeah. It's a convenience store on lots of steroids, right? For people, right, right. It's like a, if, a, if a super Walmart was a truck stop that didn't allow trucks. Okay, okay. Uh, exciting thing for me going on here. Then we'll take a break. We'll get into some news stories, some that we've been holding on to for a little bit, some that Russ doesn't even want to talk to, but they're there, and we're going to get to them. Um, but uh, my wife's birthday is this week, and uh, I finally gave in. Um, I like to surprise. Uh, I get. I like to get gifts and have them be surprises, but I also like to give gifts that will ever get used. And the two things were not meeting. I would get a, a gift that I th thought was like, "Oh, what a great surprise!" She talked about this, or certainly I know my wife well enough for this to be a nope. So we have finally uh, gotten to the level of gift giving, where I have said, "What would you like?" And she will very specifically, like, she's getting a router table uh, for her birthday this year. A woodworking uh, router? Yeah, a woodworking router. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, and I said, great, I'll order that for you. And we got about two sentences into talking about it. And she said, listen, I'll just order it. And that's what you can get me. Because there's horsepowers and... A, a bit exchange and blah 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 stuff i don't she know was afraid that. you were gonna get a nice perch for the modem yeah <laughs> babe look you put the modem on here and she's like it's a router, router. The router yeah, idiot right wrong router you idiot she'd say uh yeah so now so that's how we are apparently doing gifts now where we say what would what would you like i'd like this great buy that for yourself happy birthday We've reached that romantic uh, level of surprise. And I can't wait. I can't wait. There It'll you come go. Tomorrow. It'll come there tomorrow. Go. Birthday's on Friday. Happy birthday, sweetheart. I love you. Have a router table. I think that's what they're called. And if it doesn't get there in time, it's not your fault. Yeah, it's her fault. She should have ordered it sooner. <laughs> I'll get her a card. We'll do we'll do something, maybe. Or we sure. won't. You'll consume food, probably. Yeah, maybe. Probably not, actually, not on the day. Uh, we also do this thing where um, it's fast Friday. You won't consume food that day. I mean, not together, probably maybe breakfast. She doesn't really eat breakfast. Uh, and I do eat the breakfast and then I work the rest of the day of her birthday paying for a router table. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, but we, uh, we, we, we're doing this other thing where uh, I hate shopping with her uh, so badly, so very badly. Uh, and people may not know this, uh, but she doesn't see, so she can't drive. She sees well enough she can get around. And actually, if you met her, you would never know that she has vision problems, uh, but she can't drive. She still has her license, so technically could, but she doesn't have a car. We sold her car a couple of years ago. And so anytime she needs to go to the store, she needs me to take it to her, take her there or, you know, she can do an Uber and that kind of stuff. And um, so when she wants to go to the store and do, the long-term shopping, I drop her. There is by our house a uh, a megaplex of all of the anything you could ever want to purchase something from. And I will drop her at one end and I will say, call me when you get to the other end and I'll come get you. And it is two, three, four hours. She's going to see her dad and has to buy 
a bunch of swimsuits and other things. And I said, 0%, not interested. Love you so much. I will drive you. Call me when you get to the other end of the parking lot. It's true love, Richie. It's, yeah, I can't, I can't do it. I don't it's know. Not- how, I don't know how you shop, but I don't shop that way. What do I need? I need a bathing suit. Great. Does this bathing suit fit? Great. Is it moderately okay? Fine. Done. I am now done. Is it priced to the level that is less than I was hoping to spend? Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. How much do I anticipate to spend for this? $40. Great. Is this fit? It works. Done. I would much rather be done. And uh, that is not how I think most women shop, uh, but certainly not how my wife shops. And she likes to be able to see it and experience it. And because she doesn't get to do it very often, she likes to relish in it. And if I show any sort of um, like impatience or like, hey, how long are we doing this for um, sort of sentiment? Then it ruins it. it. Yeah, it ruins it for her. So, so she's going to buy you her. her for the birthday. You could just drop her off at the store. Yeah, listen, get this. Here, I've got a surprise for you, honey. Yep. Here you go. I would at least stop the car. You can at least where, where am I? At least stop the car. Let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to do actual articles of news. Plus, I got a couple of teasers. Some teasers. Ooh. I'm going to tease, Don't tease me, Richie. We're going to do that. We'll come back in the second half of the Cultural Hall. BestDJinUtah.com is the website. That is where you go if you would like me to come and DJ your event. Now, uh, will I do a family reunion where you all wear the same T-shirts? You bet I will. Will I travel to wherever you're at? Uh Uh-huh. Am I reasonable as far as what I cost? Yes. Yes. Do I bring a good time? Yeah, all the things. Listen, Best DJ in Utah, it's uh, my company. It's a thing I do that allows me to be able to have the time to do the cultural hall. So if someone's getting married, uh, you think, man, they need a great DJ. You're throwing a party, whether it's a 50th or 60th or 40th or 20th or whatever the party is. I've done them all and would love to be able to do that. An anniversary party, certainly done those. I did a baptism in 2023. Yeah, we did a big dance party at a baptism. Spoiler, not a Mormon baptism, but it was fun nonetheless. BestDJinUtah.com is a website. I will get back to you within 24 hours with a quote. Come on now. BestDJinUtah.com. Imagine running a small business today. It's challenging. Imaging and internet presence is an absolute must. Even with that, you're still a small star in a bright cyber universe. Now, imagine you have someone who understands how to get your site designed for your talents and then easily searched by potential clients. Imagine Lennon Design. Whether it's strictly a website or a whole package of logo creation, advertising media, and promotional materials, Lennon Design is your partner in business. They'll test the boundaries of their imagination to create something unique for you. When you need creative Creative, affordable design. Let it be Lennon Design. Call 801 699 3022 or visit lennondesign.com. Here in the second half of Articles of News, we do actual articles of news. Hit it, Peter. You can't lose articles of news. And away we go. Uh, lots of great uh, episodes of the Culture Hall recently. Uh, one where we talked with an uh, old college friend of ours, Dr. Eric Kirby Esquire. Talk all about Gen Z leading and Gen Z and how you can help involve them in your church worship and and what not to do and why they're different and all these things. That's a great episode. Uh, also, uh, another Articles of News episode, get you all caught up. And uh, we also uh, have recorded, but it is not even published yet. It's the reason why you should become a Patreon saint. I interviewed an Olympian, a, a medal-winning Olympian from the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. She's part of the Rugby Sevens. Uh, Stephanie Ravetti is her name. And uh, it'll be the next episode after this here episode that we're recording. And people will love that episode. It almost didn't happen. Uh, shout out to uh, Chris West, who does the Saints Who Sport. He contacted her after she said no to me. I said, get her. And so he did. And then I was able to talk to her. And, and it's a, a one one of, for my money, definitely one of the best from the last 100. But I would say... I would say top 25 of the 800 and some odd episodes that we've done. It's real good, real good. And in ways that you probably think, oh, I bet I know where this is going. And it does go there, but it also goes other ways that you go, oh, okay. I didn't see that. That's a left field. That's that's a fascinating approach to that one. So look forward to that episode coming in the future. If you're a Patreon saint, you already get to see that episode, go to patreon.com forward slash that culture. Did she talk about how she was inspired by that all blacks player that uh, 
went on a mission instead of playing rugby. No. Nope. Nope. But if you don't understand rugby, it's also a great episode because I ask her, I, I don't even understand what rugby is. And so we're able to get into that. So it's a level playing uh, pitch huh? instead of field level playing, level pitch. playing pitch. Uh, we talk all about it and it's cool to hear about uh, what being an Olympian uh, and being um, a former member of the church meant to her and being an, uh, an American and all these things. So it's a great episode. Um, I want to start here. I want to take this first news story because I just think this is ridiculous. You can find a link to it in the show notes. It is the literal longest way you could do a news story. And this is out of Idaho about how a steak is uh, splitting to handle growth. It's it, This article was probably like 10 pages long. And here's the long and short of it. It's Franklin County, Idaho. I don't know why it was in the news, but it was in one of the major news sources in Idaho. And it said, hey, listen, there were three stakes. And in one of the stakes, there was 4,500. And another one, there was 3,500. Another one, there was 2,500. And now they have leveled them all out to be like 2,500 apiece. And they made a new stake. And now they're stake leadership. But this article was like, and the high counselor's names are Russ Wild and Richard Stedman. And like, it was so in-depth. And it wasn't the church's like, uh, you know, newsroom press release. It wasn't the, you know, the neighborhood network next door app, something that someone can just do. It was a legitimate news source that provided so much information. I can't handle it. I, I guarantee you it was written by the uh, stake communication specialist or whatever for that, for one of those stakes. Sure. And they uh, went over the top. And in this day and age in modern journalism, like most newspapers, they'll just print that stuff. You send them something like that. I mean, I don't know if it showed up in their print edition, but you send them a 20,000 word article about yeah. your four stakes. Yeah. I mean, it really is like that. We recently shared from the cultural hall. Copy page. paste online and you're done. <laughs> yeah. We shared a, a, a different, this is not an association with this, but there was, I think it was in the Midwest somewhere where the news outlet picked up that the steak conference was going on and they're like two day conference at the latter day Saint church. And so-and-so they, you know, he's like an HVAC guy, a uh, president of, you know, wild HVAC will be speaking. And like, it made this massive thing about it. So great for the communications person, I suppose, within the steak. Good for them. That is magnifying a calling, but wow. Uh, th things I did learn from this. Did you know the eight units is the ideal for a steak? I didn't know that that was the ideal. I feel like that would be a comfortable size for a steak, eight. Yeah, because I think it, they like to say between 2,000 and 2,500, and they like to say uh, between like 250 and 400 per unit. So that tends to be right in that 2,000 to 2,500 mark. I feel like it's a, a minimum of six. I've got to be. It's gotta be. I don't know. Yeah. So uh, sorry to take that hot ticket news item from you, uh, but I wanted to get that cleared out. Congratulations, Franklin County, Idaho. You're growing and expanding. Another uh, stake of Zion. Where did you want to go next? There's 12 more high councilmen in that beautiful <laughs> county. Yep. They weren't there before. Let's name them all. Yep. <laughs> um, let's talk about um, out of New Zealand. Okay. Um, I, it's a crazy story. I, 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 I'm bad at pronouncing names and I don't know that I want to even try, but this young man, when he was in, you know, secondary school, so I'm thinking pre-high school, cause it was a few years ago, uh -huh. the kid had some hard time, had some hard times, got expelled, had some run-ins with the law, uh, then ultimately turned his life around, uh, went on a mission uh had some was a pretty exemplary guy mm -hmm. uh then came back and joined a gang <laughs> <laughs> and then um got himself in some trouble again <laughs> um villamy tonga is the guy's name he uh -huh. was sentenced this week for his involvement in a road rage incident apparently uh a motorcycle gang type group they were on their way to uh do some gang things and uh, a car got in their way. And so they intimidated him and pulled him over and he, you know, they brandished a gun and were arguing on the side of the road. And ultimately that convoy of 
gang members ended up in a big fight where a, a person was killed. But uh, that wasn't what uh, Brother Tonga did. He uh, he just, uh, you know, got in trouble with some road rage and some threatening. And, uh, yeah, it, got sentenced for think, his involvement in that. He pled guilty. And, but uh, yeah. it's, it's such a fascinating story because you read about this guy who very clearly like a difficult life, right? And then right. – I think so often uh, within the church, culturally, certainly, I don't think that it actually plays out this way with it, but we, we sort of have the assumption, like, if Russell can just go on a mission, then that can sort of set his course for his life. And I've even heard people talk like that. We just got to get him out. Right. Or, or sometimes the sentiment is if we can just make sure that he gets married or she gets married like that, like there's that. Yeah. Sort of a I feel like maybe that sentiment was more when in our youth, like, let's think in the nineties and then they raised the bar or whatever. And like, sure. but, but yeah, no, I, I definitely feel like I, I, I assume his church leaders were like, yes, we've got this kid on a mission. He served an honorable mission and uh, you know, what more can we do? And then, yeah. But, but it was interesting to note that as part of this, uh, <clears throat> the uh, Tonga, his name, last name, uh, his mother died, and then that significantly played a role into, like, how, uh, you know, he then, you know, sought the comfort or the association with a gang or was able to deal it. And in the article, it talks about how that sort of unraveled um, any sort of, like, good life that he had started to build for himself. And I just think it, it you know, we don't know a lot about this story, certainly. That's a guy that has a lot of uh, of troubles, a lot of trials along the way. But like the the couple of things for me, first of all, read the story. It's crazy. We didn't share a lot of it. Like oh, yeah. Some yeah. of the road rage stuff is just like he did what he said, what they did, what. Um, But I but like I also kind of took away. And one of the reasons why I wanted to bring it up is it's like you you have never really like it is a choice every day to, you know, kind of to choose the to follow the path or to, to live the commandments or put a different way. Like if you're not constantly choosing and or trying, it can very quickly. Now this was, this is a, a, a grandized version of this, but it can very quickly unravel to the point that your, your life will never be the same. And that's, you know, sort of the situation where this guy feels or has put himself in because of the decisions that he made. But like, I just, part of it is because it's just wild Right. Well, I also find that it's wild that in the grand scheme of things, like this crime mm-hmm. here wouldn't result in the level of attention that this crime got. Mm. Like, we wouldn't be reading the news article this detailed about it. But I mean, I think it's interesting, too. Like, he got sentenced for his involvement in this road rage incident, and he got essentially two months of house detention, which doesn't feel like a lot for brandishing a gun at someone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but the, but i think it's interesting too like the judge in the story it says the judge says you made some unwise decisions about uh what you what who you were mixed up with and and you ended up in trouble as a result and he said you know don't let this most recent mistake define you it seems like very what you would if i was the defendant in a criminal case that's what i would want the judge to show me the mercy and like mm-hmm. put me on house arrest and like give me the talking to and the say like, yeah, let's not let this define you. Let's you've seen both sides of the coin now, like pick the right side. So I think, yeah. I think it'll be interesting. I think it would be interesting to see where he is in five years. Yeah. To see if he uses this as a learning opportunity to kind of come away from it. The other thing that I thought was interesting, and you can read this in the article, find it in the show notes is uh, the uh, newspaper there in New Zealand. You remember this guy's a, a member of the church. They have decided to, asterisk out the word frick frick off he said as he brandished a gun i thought that that was an interesting choice by the uh, new zealand newspaper to asterisk dash 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 out the word frick frick off he said maybe i'm reading something else into it maybe that isn't what he said but uh, potentially frick off as he's brandishing that gun <sighs> Uh, Let's go here. Uh, We have decided that as we, the cultural hall, that as we, uh, Verlin, the news wizard, and myself, 
have decided that we are going to stay up super late on the night of the 5th of September into the 6th of September, and we are going to binge uh, a couple of the um, Secret Lives of Mormon Wives uh, Hulu series so that we could be able to record an episode in the middle of the night, as it is what everyone is talking about. We mentioned Just... in our last news article about the church saying you know, we find it unfortunate that we're misrepresented, but it is constantly in the news fetchers that provide the news for the cultural hall. One of, if not the top story, what is this about? The, you know, the the cousin of Ben Affleck is the husband of one of the people. My my favorite thing out of all the hype and coverage, and I don't remember if it was Twitter or TikTok or where I saw this, where they showed the that delightful trailer of... Mm -hmm. The secret lives of Mormon women, and the response was, "I guess that's why they had to destroy the Provo Temple." Oh, <laughs> was like, I've been tainted. Yeah, that's it's gone. We're gonna have to raise that building. I I do wonder. Uh, you know, the church very much within that statement, uh, approaching that, and and some others speculated the uh, heretic, the trailer to the movie that'll come out in the fall. Uh, do you think? And maybe you have a better pulse on this because you're around more people that aren't members of the church. Do you think that anyone watches those trailers, takes what they know about members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and goes, yeah, that seems on brand? Or do they or do they see it what I feel like so many see it as, which is, of course, of course, it is the worst of the worst or the fringe of the fringe. Of course, that's what they're doing. And. They probably have some association with the church, but these, you know, all the Mormons I don't, I know are, are, you know, practice fidelity and monogamy and, you know, boring. Doing, yeah. And are boring sexual <laughs> creatures. Um, I, I, the only thing that I can think to say is that I'm guessing, um, I know that here I've seen lots of people I know on my, my Facebook friends from here okay. in Texas have, I've seen several people post references to that show and say this isn't how my church is this isn't mm -hmm. doesn't represent us and like i don't feel like people in utah need to do that sure but i don't know that i don't think people here need to either really well i think that's been sort of the call to arms which is <laughs> yeah. like hey, tell people that this is the, not who we are but do you think that there are people I that just like on the nose go, yeah, I bet that's uh yeah. Mormon swingers. Sure. Soft swinging. That's what they are. I bet that's what they're all doing. <laughs> they're all, I, uh, no, no, I don't think people are like that. I don't think people, I think, I think people may literally legitimately be more confused by, I don't know when Warren Jeffs was in the news and right. the rest and like, and all of that polygamy stuff, I think is probably more like, wait, I don't understand how that's different than this. I don't think people look at that and be like, that's what's going on at that church over there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. next to the Bucky's. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I do hope it's a good missionary tool and we find some uh, young married couples flocking to the um, house of worship. Boo. Uh, yeah. I just find it to be a fascinating. Um... There's going to be a lot of pineapple at the uh, next linger longer. Stupid. <laughs> Why are all these pineapples upside down? It's just not, it just seems, it seems so ridiculous to me. It's like, it's like, like the whole story of it when it was happening or when it was a thing, what I thought was ridiculous. Yeah. I feel like I had coworkers that were like, thought it was hilarious and were like eating, eating that whole thing up. But I, I don't know. I'm, I can't wait to hear your reaction to the. Yeah. I mean, it's like the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, right? Uh, like that is also. I mean, those aren't all members. Some of them uh, used to be members, and they talk pretty openly about the church, um, right. for for better and oftentimes for worse. But but like, I just feel like if you enter into something with even the slightest bit of like, I wonder if what I'm seeing is real. You can very quickly depict that maybe it's real, but this is certainly not most people's experience. Right, and I mean. Like it happens with any time the church gets mentioned in any form of media, right? Mm -hmm. Like I think of of the, what the what was the uh, Westover book, the uneducated, educated. Oh uh, yeah, uh, uh, educated. 
Yeah, yeah. I yeah, just think Westover. Yeah. When I when I when I listened to that, I thought there are. I can see how some of that could have been your experience, but like some of it just seemed like so off the wall that I was like, hmm, I don't. I don't believe that that happened that way. Mm-hmm. And so I, I don't know. I, I just think, I, I think people there's, you know, people glom onto whatever they want to glom onto, but like, I think ultimately people know that our church is really boring and yeah. <laughs> in and- that vanilla way that like, Oh, that's, that's not how these people are. But I think, I don't know. I think, I think everybody to some degree, like, I think there's, there are groups of people that will always think that religious people, regardless of their faith, if they claim to, if a person claims to be religious, that they are, they're up to no good in some way, shape or form, or they're, they're doing something hypocritical some way somehow. Sure. sure. And this is just evidence of that. But I, I anticipate that my review will consist something of why did I stay up late and watch this and also i i have never right. had and also experience. like where can i buy a house in utah county <laughs> uh to be fair uh one of the uh people in it was the daughter of one of my uh old ward members back when i was married hmm. so so i know them i know the it's, family it's like that's is that the, that's going to be the that seven degrees of bacon thing. That's yeah. going to be the Mormon thing. Well, like I how that. are you connected to the real housewives? Of- no, I say that to say that family, very normal, not all of these things. Yeah. I just, I, I just feel like I missed out on what I, what could have happened when I experienced a monicum of TikTok fame in the uh-huh. 2020s. Uh-huh. Like I, I just got even more boring. I didn't, I, but I should. You should have. You should have labeled it something it else. Been. Yeah, it's like a sliding doors experience of your life. You'll never know what if you would have made that train and been able if, to go on. If only I was in Provo, I could have could have been part of the posse. I yeah. I mean, as a quick aside, can you imagine anything more miserable than being part of a swinging community? I um. I don't want to imagine. <laughs> I, I uh, like uh, for, for so many reasons, I don't think that I, I just, I can't wrap my head around that in, in a lot of ways. I don't know. But I do like pineapple on my pizza. So, sure. <laughs> well, it's, it's exactly the same thing. So I appreciate the comparison there. Uh, where do you want to go next? Let's go back to New Zealand. Okay, let's do it. So um, I tried really hard to figure out from the story so what happened in new zealand is um apparently they they did this the government did this whole in-depth analysis of how abuse that has taken place in um care programs that were operated by religious organizations like uh orphanages and care centers for people that had the needs needs to have full-time care those kind of places Mm -hmm. and uh, they call it the Care Royal Commission Inquiry. They they went through and it's it, the report is massive. It's chapters long of like all these things that have happened over decades about where these organizations have failed to meet their responsibilities and like uh, incidences of abuse that have happened mm-hmm. and uh, you know kind of paints this whole picture. But I could never really pin down what accusations there were against the church i imagine it was a, all the people involved were probably like there were abuse cases of abuse all along the way sure. but the church put out a statement saying that they were they they were happy to participate in the um in the process and then they were grateful that people were willing to share their experiences and that uh, abuse of course is never okay that's something that should never be tolerated but that the and that the church looks forward to implementing some of the recommendations that that panel presents. But as much as I looked, I couldn't really find specific instances where it talked about what the church was accused of doing or so, but they so did put out a state. Go ahead. I was just going to say, so grateful for recommendations and I guess for these audits to try and yeah. these vulnerable individuals. The church will That's support great. the recommendations, but like I didn't, I didn't find like this whole section where like, and the Mormon church did these terrible things to the the people in 
whatever part of Australia, New Zealand to the hobbits. They didn't yeah. <laughs> or what in the Shire. Then? Yeah, they they uh but so I, I didn't find I didn't find anything there. I'm sure there were instances where sure. the church were was involved in centers. I mean historically that they we could probably name several instances where the church in various ways have in in those scenarios where in, in really any faith and whenever you have or you're running a care center or an orphanage or those kind of places like uh, abuse sometimes tends to happen in those places i think because abusers are attracted to those kind of places mm -hmm. and so regardless of faith but I, I i mean i thought it was interesting that the church put out a statement about it but i also found it interesting that they put out a statement but i couldn't really find out why yeah they did well it, well and in my heart of hearts um, maybe i just missed I it so there, there's probably yeah. a, there's probably a thing where like oh brother new zealand guy did and something terrible else. yeah but yeah a part of me uh liked that it seemed fairly proactive yeah the church because you know i i didn't spend it sounds like the time that you did but tried to find any you know allegations or anything like that but i i appreciated that it was an organization that is proactively trying to prevent these things from occurring that the church has said hey we participated in this and there are things that we can take from this that will allow us to do the things that we do better that's great we don't need to have brother or sister so-and-so do something to brother or sister so-and-so in order for us to get better. And that, um, to me, was the big takeaway uh, and why to have something like that. And also mm -hmm. that it was super weird that it seems like a fairly hefty thing with no sort of like, and this is the allegation here, or, you know, just odd news. That's what this whole Articles of News is. It's just weird news stories from different arts and what is you know all these different things yeah so so let's yeah. do another one <laughs> yeah, go on would, would you like uh would you want to do you want to end this uh episode with uh the borehole water system or do you want to <laughs> end this uh this whole articles of news with uh, the boy scouts which way would you prefer to go with this i mean i don't think we can talk about borehole watering water systems for very long okay okay we we, we bought one it's going to africa okay <laughs> let's talk about boy scouts okay uh yeah real quick uh the upper east region of ghana is where that uh, borehole water system is headed in collaboration with the ngo the church work church worked to build the solar powered system as a supplement to previous charity and government solutions that despite great effort have struggled because of the extreme environmental challenges. So yeah, I think I think that's an example of something that the church has done. That's that's great. We we're, we're working to get water to people that need water, and we should do uh, lots of that. Well, and in a sustainable way, because I think for yeah. a long time there was a a lot within the church and 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 in the greater world where people were like, we need to get these people this thing, you know, we need to get these folks food. And so we'd bring in a truckload of food and they're like, food. And then we'd be like, peace out. We're done. Got your food. And it in some ways ended up being worse. Or, you know, in the case of this particular one, that it just wasn't sustaining. And so in some ways, it can leave the people that were trying to help off and help out and we're genuinely trying to help them out genuinely trying to give a hand up it, it it ends them in a in a worse situation so for the church to identify first of all the need and then second of all to be able to go okay here it is sustainable let's do this let's roll with this and then be able to provide something like that something simple something that most of members of the church i think take for granted water it's a uh, you know i like that i love any of those like, Af like a cold glass of water yeah i like uh, i like the stories where we're making uh changes in people's lives i love when the gospel is taught in just like its purest simplest way to people and you can tell it's resonating with people but i also like when principles of things uh are taught within church or by members where it's like hey russ don't spend more money than you have and that resonates in a way like we're able to teach that to a group of people that that then they can go Oh, I can better my life by understanding this simple principle. And you wouldn't think like the the um, spending of money and or budgeting necessarily as a gospel principle, but it's the ability, the agency that occurs, you know, when you're able to be in control of something like that is pure doctrine. Right. You yeah. Know. And I think anytime that the church can 
flex its muscles to like make life's better for people on such a basic level. I think it's great. Yeah. And should happen more. Yes. And is, and certainly, and is being shared more. Now this last story, uh, we are two people that should not be necessarily talking about it in, uh, and I think you'll understand it as we sort of get into the story. This was a couple weeks ago because it mentions that it was 50 years ago this week. I think this is two or three weeks old that the NAACP sued the Boy Scouts of America over a Mormon ban on black scouts in troop leadership. Now, did you know this at all? No, no, no idea. Mm -hmm. uh, so this story, I appreciate, points out this is old news, um, but uh, does kind of a quick uh, layout of this. And I just think I, I think a couple of things. I think that this is valuable to know because 50 years is only half a century. Uh, most people uh alive i don't know statistics half the people alive were alive 50 years ago this was part of their life experience a good majority of the people so th all to say it's just not in the far distant right like distant it was past. a few years before we were born yeah two like, for me and i think two for you as well yeah i mean i think i think when i think about issues of race in the church i often think like what would it have been like to be there i haven't really ever talked to my mom Mm -hmm. What was that like? Like, and I think probably the world was bigger back then. Mm. Like, I, I remember I, I came to Texas on my mission, mm -hmm. and in my first area, there was a, a lady. Her name was Sister Hayes, and everybody thought it was so funny to take the new missionary to Sister Hayes's house, and we'd go in there, and she was just—I don't want to say she was a stereotypical uh african-american woman but kind of and i think she played it up mm -hmm. and so like i get in there my first thing and she looks at me and she goes, where are you from I'm like uh you touch it you may never seen a black person before have you that was that was the first thing she said to me and i was like sure. and like like what do you say to that as a 19 year old kid in like a strange place and like and she was messing with me uh -huh. and like was doing it because she thought it was funny but uh -huh. like I don't know if I legitimately think about it, like there weren't any in my high school. Like I had no interactions with people of color in any way, shape or form in my childhood. Mm -hmm. Like I obviously had seen Carl Malone mm -hmm. <laughs> playing basketball, but sure. like, but I mean like, and that was me growing up. That was me in the nineties. Right. But like, I can't 20 years earlier, I'm sure it was less. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so like, I just can't, wrap my head around to like like I, I i apply what i think about the relationships i have with people of all sorts of races today and i just don't i can't imagine what that was like in utah in the 60s and 70s hmm. does that make sense like mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. almost like it was a non-factor like yeah there weren't we didn't have black people in our how many scout troops in utah in 1975 had black people in them yeah yeah, yeah. Three? There's certainly there's certainly some part. I, I mean, worldwide. I mean, church wide. I'm sure there was a lot more, but yeah. Uh, not saying it was good or what they did. I mean, it was it, it, in today's it life. Just it was, looks it just terrible. Was. I just yeah, yeah. It's interesting to me. So uh, this is probably a year ago or so now. Um, I'll I'll share different videos from weddings that I do, and I had a video on Instagram go kind of viral for the worst reason. I was doing a wedding in Bountiful, which if you're not going to be in Utah County, but you want to have a, a mostly white experience, Bountiful is it, right? Like it is sleepy bedroom community of not a lot of diversity. So this wedding, I share this video and uh, it gets commented on by a person of color who's like, where are the black people at this wedding? And then someone else comments and then someone else comments. And it was hundreds of people saying, is this a segregationist wedding? Is this like all of these things that I just was like, no, no I, 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 I didn't, first of all, is just a video that I took and you guys are missing the point of what this thing is. And second of all, like it, it, it was proximity and, or, um, percentage, you know, population in this particular area and in this friend group, right? That's not to say that it was at all. Okay. But I do think that it's important for perspective's sake to be able to look at that um 
And hopefully that's that's not a, a, an incorrect thing to say. I welcome more conversations around this about anything. If there's anything we've said so far uh, that, you know, we need to make sure that we're aware of. Maybe there's some bias or some. No, but I, I mean, like, the, the whole thoughts. idea that like a 13 year old scout uh -huh. can't be the senior patrol leader because he's black is like so patently offensive to me now yes I, I i just don't i can't wrap my head around the fact that that was a policy sure and but that but that, and that but... it got to the point where like no 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 okay we'll let we'll let 13 year old black scout be the senior patrol leader as long as there's not a white kid that's more qualified or that he has to be the most qualified mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like i did that's just like like that's crazy to me and I, I wonder, like, how would I have reacted had I been there? But at the same time, I know that, like, well, if I would have been in my scout troop, like, it would have never come up. And I would have never known that was a policy because it would have never been an issue because uh, Utah County is whiter than milk. Mm -hmm. So I don't I, I, I don't know that I would have ever known that was a policy because it wouldn't have ever been a thing. So I to have reacted to yeah, so it so it's sort of a fascinating thing, and I hope that I'm not conflating two things, but I I it it is with um recent handbook changes interesting to note um some similarities is I guess how I'll couch this right where with transgender individuals and being able to uh teach youth to be able to be instructors and some of these other things. It's not the same. I'm not saying that it is the same, but I am saying that it is similar. And there are lots of people that you'll see within the church without fail defending saying, oh yeah, no, that's how it has to be. And the reason I think why people defended that within the church back in the mid seventies before the priesthood ban was lifted is they said, oh yeah, no, this is how it has to be without any sort of question of like, is this a right or a wrong thing or what does this say to the to the black people or to transgender people about their worth value or place in our community like they're not having those questions because what they just say is well yeah of course cuz uh, cuz that's how it is and they don't take a second to to think about that i i think it's wild when i think about the priesthood ban you know the the first person to go on a mission after the priesthood ban was lifted, the first person of color to go on a mission, still alive. The first person to receive the priesthood after the priesthood ban was lifted. We've interviewed him here in the cultural hall. You can find that episode with him. Still alive. And, and, and I mean, if you want to talk about uh, parallels with modern issues, I can't. I, I can 100% see the scenario that if the church was still in Boy Scouts, if that was still that we were still in the program, I could I could see the policy being if a if a young man is a homosexual that he can't be in a senior patrol leader. I could totally sure. see that being the church policy, which like I could see it mirroring that same thing. Yeah. But whether they and you know that's not an issue now because we're not in scouts, but like I can see that being I if somebody said that would have been a policy, then I'm like, oh yeah, that probably would have been a policy. And I don't know how I feel about that. And... Yeah, it's difficult. There's lots of things, you know, hopefully uh, the conversations that, you know, you and I have, sometimes we are a little flippant and say some dismissive things for humor and entertainment purposes. Right. Um, but but fu fully feel feeling the weight of some of these things. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. I don't I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel. But, I don't know if I'm showing up the way that it is. I may listen to this episode in a year's time and go, oh, man. But I, 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 that's what I mean. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm curious how I would have been back then. Would I have been one of the people that were agitating or trying to push things forward or wanting, wanting those changes? Or would I have just, you know, sat quietly to the side? And how does that reflect on how I'm acting with, uh, similar things today i and my comfort level with them it's yeah it's a, it's all just the ick yeah what a great way to end the episode thanks for picking to end it that way russ i thought you were gonna i thought you were gonna start with this one so i'm glad <laughs>
Yeah, there you go. Start right out the gate. Here we go. Let's go here and then take an episode from there. Well, uh, if you want to be a part of the watch party, Russ, uh, we're staying up late. September 5th into September September 6th. We're watching the uh, real lives of Mormon wives. The secret. And Aflac is so proud right now. Ugh. And the thing is, they're having to glum onto that for just a little bit more publicity. Affleck, blah, blah, blah. And I watched that, a little that bit. That duck is like, I have nothing to do with this. Yeah. I watched a little bit today where, uh, so I think it's Casey Affleck. Is that right? Is one of the spouses of uh, one of the people in the Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. And it's a cousin to Ben Affleck, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's fairly distant, too. I don't think it's super close. But the the wife in the sweet way that we Mormon people like to claim uh, either people who are members of the church <laughs> or that we like to try and glum on to fame. She called herself the original uh, Jenny from the block or the original J-Lo because she was married to an Affleck. And it just I hate it. I hate every bit of it. It's going to be a review of me just being ornery because it's going to be the middle of the night and me going. I go to the same church that these people went to at one point at all. Makes you look at you, the people on the benches next to you, like, what do you really think? What's yes. really going on in your head? Yes. Are we yes. hearing the same thing? Yeah. It makes me want to brandish a gun and say, frick off. And then Thankfully have someone... the church <laughs> said you couldn't bring it to church anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But I can still say frick off. And then you can, you know, I hope you make better decisions in the future. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can be my judge and jury. Well, there it is. Uh, hope that this episode has nourished and strengthened your body. That if you're not healthy enough to listen this week, that you'll be healthy enough to listen next week. And that when the time comes, you'll be able to travel home in safety. He'll get part of this. In the meantime, Chris at Alpine Lakes Travel, Rick McGee, Debbie Wanless, Chocolate Cake Bites Podcast, and the Tiger with a U will be saving a seat for you. On the back row. There it is of the cultural crawl. Save me a seat, it's sure to be neat. On the back row, we really gotta go on the Culture Hall show.